From the heat waves in western Canada and the U.S. to the floods in China and parts of Europe, it seems that signs of runaway climate change are everywhere this summer. And the magnitude of some of these events has renewed focus on the concept of a tipping point in the Earth's ecosystem. The CBC's Anayat Singh joins us now to explain. A lot of people are talking about this, Anayat. Let's talk about these tipping points and what they might mean. So these tipping points are thresholds beyond which a climate system is permanently and irreversibly changed. Um, an example is the Amazon rainforest. Climate scientists worry that at a certain level of deforestation, the forest will just start collapsing and disappear altogether. Another example is the monsoon rains in India. Climate scientists worry that at a certain point of global warming, the monsoons will be dramatically reduced or disappear as well. So these are uh, kind of rapidly or, or uh, relatively rapidly moving changes. Uh, they're dramatic and uh, possibly irreversible. Um, I spoke with Owen Gaffney, uh, a climate analyst at the Stockholm Resilience Center in Sweden. He studies tipping points and co-authored a report in 2019 about them. Um, here's what he had to say. If um, we go beyond those boundaries, then we take more risks that we cross tipping points in the Earth system. And uh, tipping points are, are large-scale um, changes that, um, that could happen abruptly um, and that could be uh, potentially irreversible. Just this week, an international group of scientists released another report uh, warning that we might be nearing or have crossed several key tipping points already for uh, ecosystems like the West Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets, uh, warm water coral reefs, and the Amazon rainforest. Um, so a worrying warning, and, and those scientists are saying that we need uh, quicker, shorter updates on the climate emergency to keep up with these fast-moving changes. And I mentioned you mentioned so many other parts of the world, but why should we be worried particularly about these tipping points? Well, we know that the climate is warming. Uh, we are already at 1.2 degrees Celsius of warming over pre-industrial levels currently. Uh, that could go up to 1.5 to 2 degrees uh, under the Paris Agreement to limit global warming, uh, or 3 and 4 degrees um, if uh, countries miss their climate target. But the concept of tipping points makes all of that much more complicated. It, it means instead of gradual warming, it means dramatic changes that are difficult to adapt to. So, for example, if the Greenland ice sheet hits a tipping point, that could lead to, um, you know, ocean levels rising around the world and, and to a level that we can't come back from. Another example is the monsoon rains. Millions of people in India rely on it for agriculture. If those rains uh, disappear, that could mean disruption to a big part of the world. We already saw what uh, dramatic changes, uh, what challenges they can bring here in Canada. The heat wave in BC, uh, we saw several towns beat their previous uh, extreme heat records by four or five degrees, which is quite unexpected. You normally expect it to be by one, two or three degrees. And these kind of dramatic changes make it very difficult for communities to adapt. I spoke with Simon Donner, a, a climate scientist at the University of British Columbia. Um, here's what he had to say. But what that tells you is that the model predictions for the future, um, even if the general range of climate being projected is correct, the extremes, it might actually be missing some edges on the extremes. So extreme events could be even worse um, than, than are being projected by models. And this is why it's so important to meet our climate goals and limit warming so we don't trigger these tipping points. Yeah, when it's no longer linear, all bets are off. Thanks for this, Anayat. Nayat Singh, reporting in Toronto.